Pets thrive on predictability, so it's more important than ever to understand how the transition back to work can negatively impact our furry friends. So Darius Cooper, National Dog Training Manager at Petco, joins us to discuss ways we can help our pets cope with these changes. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Jordan. Glad to be with you today. I, I'm excited to um, know what we can do, these tips that can help because a lot of us going back, I mean, I have two dogs of my own, worked from home for seven months, now getting back into uh, the studio here. So uh, what kind of anxiety do pets often experience, first of all? Right, I mean, you hit it right on the nose, right? There's been so much that we've been going through and our pets really have been along for the ride. And you know, pet mental health is really something that isn't often talked about. Now with people spending more time outside of their homes, you know, now more than ever, uh, it's so imperative to really understand that our daily behaviors can directly impact our pet's mental health. Now, of course, separation anxiety is certainly common, um, but one thing I also wanna call out social anxiety, it's real with pets. Now, separation anxiety really is a hyper for attachment to a pet parent and social anxiety really is um, the inability to feel comfortable outside their safe place, right? So, you know, one thing I'm always going to say, if you ever notice an abrupt change in your pet's behavior or you're expecting a, a dramatic change to your routine, like going back to work, um, you're definitely going to want to consult your veterinarian first. Okay, so then what are some of the potential causes and indicators then of the separation and the social anxiety, which social anxiety I didn't even think about? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, pets, are they're really adaptable, mm -hmm. uh, but they really do thrive with structure and routine. Now, pets can easily become stressed, confused, and even unsettled. Um, and this can certainly impact their mental health long term, if not addressed properly. Now, one thing to remember, our fur babies, they're also individuals just like you and I. So anxieties can manifest differently depending on the dog or the pet that you have uh, right in front of you. So some of the things you might see with a dog that might suffer from a separation anxiety would be excessive jumping when you come inside the home um, and and one thing I want to call out is it's so very easy to see uh, a behavior like jumping on you when you enter the home as um, unwanted or undesired but if you think about it in many cases dogs are stressed and they're looking to the one person that really provides them that love and security and that's just one way that they they communicate how they're feeling now of course you know one thing I'm always going to say when we're thinking about transition is proactivity is going to be key so the more we can do to get our dogs and all pets acclimated to our upcoming changes that's always going to be my first um, recommendation okay getting them acclimated but how do we what are where do we start what do we do what are some things that we pet parents can do to help address this anxiety Right. So again, that whole idea of a change in routine. So, you know, for me, if I know that uh, I have a pet parent that's going to be going to work, let's say in a month from now, you know, begin the training now. So if you think about, you know, exiting and, and, and entering your home, and that's a dramatic time in your dog's day, right? So for us to just leave uh, right away for a dog that hasn't really been apart from us, um, that can be a lot. So you can do what I like to call a mock departure. So if you're sitting on the couch with your dog, get up, pick up the keys, walk over to the door, don't leave the house, and then come back and sit down on the couch and repeat this process a few times so your dog starts to realize that that door, those keys, um, really doesn't necessarily mean that a huge dramatic thing is going to happen like their parent leaving. That's so interesting because when I do pick up the keys, it's like they know. Even if I go to pack a bag, they're like, please don't leave me, please don't leave me. Yeah. You're going out of town, take me with you. Yeah. Okay, so now we know what to look for. Now we know ways that we can maybe prevent it. But what do we do to, you know, if they are anxious in the middle of it? I mean, is there anything we can do in that moment? Right. So, you know, of course, I am a dog trainer, but one thing that I'm a huge advocate for is veterinary partnerships. So, you know, I'm always going to recommend that all pet parents consult their veterinarians, uh, number one, to ensure that there aren't any uh, underlying health issues that could be dramatically impacting uh, your individual pet's behavior. Now, there was actually a recent survey that went out, which I found to be super interesting, and it said that 72% of dog pet parents and 51% 50, of cat pet parents believe that their pet has some type of anxiety. Now, what I found to be super interesting here was 25% of those pet parents actually said uh, they could not identify exactly the physical symptoms of their pet's mental health. 
which again, for me, this tells me that this is exactly where trainers and veterinarians have the opportunity to come into support. So at Petco, we actually just uh, created a brand new online virtual group class for pet parents uh, called Well Adjusted Dog. And in short, our trainers get to work with you uh, from the comfort of your own home and really walk you through the behaviors that you're seeing and help you to interpret it, uh, give you tips and tricks to teach relaxation. And you know, one thing that I do want to call out when you think about separation or social anxiety, uh, our goal as trainers is always going to be able to teach a dog how to relax, how to self-settle, uh, because the ability to do that can really be life-changing. One thing I did get from a pet store was the little bed, you know, that it's like a it's supposed to help them calm down. I know that helps one of my dogs, but the other dog doesn't get on it at all. So thank you so much for these tips. I know it's going to help a lot of people going back to work, giving their pets a little bit of relief. Where can we go, though, for more information? Absolutely. So if uh, you yourself or any of your viewers, of course, want to take your training leap and, and learn more about pet anxiety and how to, of course, have training plans and how to work through it, of course, head over to petco.com forward slash mental health. Okay, I'll be doing that. Thank you so much for your time today. It's so interesting. Yes, we think about our own mental <laughs> health, but not necessarily of our pets. Absolutely. It was such a pleasure talking with you today. All right. And if you'd like more information or to see this segment again, go to firstcoastliving.net.